Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 19 december 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin will be in English, but first we have some small matters in Dutch. This broadcast will be accompanied by Contestia, 125 bandwidth and 8 tones. Vandaag dus Contestia bij de uitzending, zoals we de afgelopen dagen ook gedaan hebben met een bandbreedte van 125 en 8 tonen. En de start-stop-tonen zijn ingeschakeld. Gisteren was de uitzending van PA00 Nieuws voor het eerst en tijdelijk alleen via internet te beluisteren. Dat is eigenlijk heel goed verlopen, hoewel het toch anders is dan via de ether. Dat was wel duidelijk. Vooral op het onderwerp dat we tijdelijk via internet extra hebben, dit keer over Alexander Graham Bell en hoe hij tot zijn bekendste uitvinding kwam, hebben meerdere mensen positief gereageerd. Ik heb geprobeerd om de uitzending ook op tijd op YouTube te krijgen, maar dat is niet gelukt. Gisteravond om half drie s'nachts was YouTube nog niet klaar met het bewerken van het bestand. Dat bij mij ook al nogal lang duurde om te maken. Het was pas rond vijf voor elf klaar. Maar goed, vandaag verscheen het alsnog op internet, dus het is nu te beluisteren. De uitzending van vrijdagavond kan behalve via YouTube ook beluisterd worden in herhaling via fm.shorties.nl. Iedere zaterdag, iedere zondag en iedere woensdagavond vanaf zeven uur s'avonds. But we will start today with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G4BAO and G3YLA. The smooth sunspot number for December is 46.1. This time last year it was 63.7, which shows how much we're sliding down the solar cycle 24. Coronal mass ejections and coronal holes continue to cause problems at times, with the K-index hitting 5 on Tuesday the 15th. As the coming plasma hit the Earth, you can sometimes get an initial positive phase on HF, with maximum usable frequencies increasing. This may be what happened on Saturday the 12th, during the ARRL 28 megs contest. 10 meter DX conditions were good on Saturday, when the high latitude K index recorded at College, Alaska, hit 5, but by Sunday reports said DX conditions were not so good. This shows that it's a good idea to keep an eye on the upper HF bands, as openings can happen at any time. This week the solar flux level is predicted to be in the range of 105 to 120, with geomagnetic conditions mostly settled with a predicted average KP index of 2. Using the Chiltern ionosond data, maximum usable frequencies are still hitting 25 to 28 megs at times, so watch for fleeting openings on 12 and 10 meters during daytime. For example, the 15 watt 4B4 CY Cypress beacon on 28.220 has been heard in the UK when the band is otherwise empty. VHF and up now it looks as though there is a potential for tropospheric openings over Christmas week. This is due to very unsettled weather with most mild and rather windy southwesterly patterns throughout the period. There will, however, be higher pressure over the continent, but much of the time this is some way to the southeast of us and not really a great option for tropo. There's just a chance the high will build a little closer to the UK just after Christmas, but this will probably only benefit the southeastern part of the country. The small Ursids meteor shower due yesterday or today may already have peaked by the time you hear this bulletin, so it's back to early morning random meteor scatter operation until the quarantids. This shower should happen before dawn on January the 4th and can produce more than a hundred visible meteors per hour. It has a sharp, unpredictable peak lasting only a few hours, so you have to be on the band at the right time to take advantage. It's a good week for EME with low losses and lengthening moon window due to the moon re reaching maximum declination on Christmas Day. Finally, do remember that there's always satellite QSOs to be had on the VHF bands, irrespective of the weather. That's it for this season. Sorry, this for this week even. So, season's greeting from the propagation team. On the 15th of December, British European Space Agency astronaut Tim Peake arrived at the International Space Station. During his six-month stay, he'll, he will use the amateur radio equipment on board the ISS to make contact with selected UK schools using the callsign GB1SS. 
The first will be Sandringham School, St Albans, between the 4th and 10th of February. I'm sorry, between the 4th and 10th of January. Tim will be the first ISS crew member to use the Ham TV Fastscan digital amateur TV system. The UK Spectrum Policy Forum has published its final report that provides a snapshot of current UK Spectrum usage and expected long-term future needs. The launch event was a high-profile one with Minister Ed Vasey giving the keynote speech. Based on a submission by the Society in June, Amateur Radio is featured as one of the 11 sectors examined. You can download the report from the TechUT website, tinyurl.com forward slash gb2rs hyphen tc. Mid-Sussex Repeater Group has announced that GB3HY is back on the air after an absence of nearly three years. The repeater is now operating from the same location as Haywards Heath, with an output power of 10 watts. The input frequency is 430.900 MHz, output is 438.500 MHz, and CTCSS is 88.5 Hz. The repeater group will appreciate any reports to g6dgk at msars.org.uk. Groups from schools, universities and local clubs are activating G15 Yota and its regional variations in December. Many of its operators will be experiencing amateur radio for the first time, so if you hear the station, please give them a call. On the 20th, Worksop Amateur Radio Society will be on the air with local young people, and on Monday the RSGB Youth Committee will operate the call sign. Tuesday sees Withal Amateur Radio Club on the air, and on the 26th and 27th the RSGB Youth Committee is on the air again. The Aris Russia team is planning a couple of slow scan TV transmissions in the next few months on 145.800 MHz FM using 5 kHz deviation. The first session is being targeted for the 26th and 27th of December, although this is subject to change. The downlink mode will be PD120, which should allow for the opportunity to receive more images in a single pass. The ISS puts out a strong signal and a 2 meter handheld with a quarter wave antenna may be enough to receive it. Further information http two dots two slash as amsat hyphen uk dot org. The RSGB's National Radio Centre at Bletchley Park Museum will be closed from the 24th of December until the 5th of January inclusive. The RSGB would like to take the opportunity to thank the volunteers for their time and effort during the year. Bletchley Park itself is open to visitors daily except the 24th, 25th and 26th of December and the 1st of January. There's a new exhibit in Hut 8, The Petard Pinch, telling the incredible story of the capture of crucial Enigma code books. These enabled Bletchley Park to break back into the German naval Enigma network, codenamed Shark, following a devastating 10 month blackout. to 18 hours depending on how far north you live the exchange is your four character locator said he dropping everything now for the radio propagation report